our governor, to my home borough of the Bronx and uh, to our area. I also want to extend a warm welcome to our Bronx Borough President, Vanessa Gibson, the first woman to serve in that role, which we're really proud about um, within our borough, as well as ESD President Hope Knight, DFS Superintendent Adrian Harris, NAACP President Dr. Hazel Dukes, and all of the partners who have been so critical today in having this uh, really important conversation. SOBRA was founded as a community and economic development organization in 1972 to address the disinvestment and fragility of our business community in the South Bronx. But as we celebrate our 50th year, we see that today our small businesses remain fragile. Our minority women-owned businesses continue to face disproportionate challenges. This pandemic has taken an incredible toll on our business community. 40% of Bronx businesses closed due to the pandemic. The New York State Controller estimates that 60 to 80% of minority-owned businesses in the South Bronx are at risk. The Bronx is also the most underbanked borough in the city of New York. So, Governor, your choice to have this conversation today in the Bronx with community leaders, CDFIs, and academia on how to best support the economic recovery in black communities, especially for black women who were disproportionately hit by the pandemic, could not be more timely or more relevant. I had the pleasure to work with you uh, in my own state service as you served as Lieutenant Governor, and I'm extremely excited to support your longstanding commitment to women and communities of color now as Governor. Sobro shares your vision and your commitment as we provide a broad array of financing and technical assistance services to the small business community, and as we all seek to tackle the structural racism in our financial system, create a path to achieving financial health and sustaining economic development statewide. So thank you for choosing Sobro to host you today. Thank you for your leadership and we are looking forward to hearing more about your amazing work. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm just uh, looking for some remarks here. <laughs> oh, there we go. Not that I couldn't wing this if I had to. Uh, first of all, to Lourdes, thank you for welcoming us here. Yes, we had uh, a lot of, lot of conversations when we both served in our previous capacities about how we can promote particularly women, women of color, small businesses, and bring it all together. And many times it came down to resources, and that's a lesson we never forgot. And so thank you for your leadership here. This is an important organization at a time when we need everyone to come together to bring back our communities that have been hit so hard. So thank you to everyone at Sobro for uh, never giving up during some of the darkest days that we just came through over the last two years. And someone who I feel so confident uh, at the helm here in the Bronx is my great friend, Vanessa Gibson. And she has been through uh, trial by fire and a lot of challenges uh, since you first became borough president just two months ago. It's hard to believe. And I want to thank you for the passion that you bring to your position. We've had many deep felt conversations, especially during the fire that, uh, that the, the community rose up for, but uh, you never give up on your people and our people, and I want to thank you for that passion that you bring to this. Also, we have uh, individuals from our team, very, very proud to have Hope Knight as the head of Empire State Development. Uh, she is no stranger to working in places, Upper Manhattan Development Corporation, Jamaica Development Corporation. I had a chance to work with her in those capacities, and I saw a true leader who really understood at a deep level the challenges of the communities, and that's why I'm so proud that you are the CEO of Empire State Development. Uh, not a small task, uh, but I know you've been really doing an incredible job. And Adrian Harris, uh, just we are so fortunate to have her based on her her national experience, her work for the Obama administration, the Treasury Department, and now to have her talent as the superintendent of financial services here in New York State is just an incredible catch for us. So we're delighted to have you as well, but also the conscience of, uh, of our state, and that is Hazel Duke, someone who, who calls out injustices wherever they rear their ugly heads. And I want to thank her for being at my side as we do whatever we can to help truly have an equitable uh, an inclusive recovery. You know, yes, we knew times were hard before, but we have been kicked back and knocked down, and we now have to rise up together, and having Hazel Dukes and all the power that she brings with her voice uh, at our side as we talk about our equity agenda. And this is about promoting an equity agenda that we talked about in our state of the state. It materialized in our budget because the budget is where you actually put the money behind 
the, uh, the issues you want to raise. And I want to say I thank everyone who just participated in a very thoughtful roundtable, letting us know the challenges that businesses face um, in ordinary times, but again, we're focusing on this post-pandemic recovery right now. And leaders who are also out there on the front lines fighting racial injustice and the disparities have existed in every walk of life, including health care and housing, but also access to money, access to capital. And what does that mean? Well, you only need to be denied that access to understand how it affects your family. It means you may not be able to buy that home. It may, not, may mean you can't invest in your child's education because the costs are so high. It may mean that you can't start that small business that you've always dreamed of or that you don't have the money you need for retirement. These are real problems, and they've been exacerbated. And what we have an opportunity to do right now is to begin to right those wrongs. And it's about celebrating those who are in those positions. And there's something known as uh, community development investment corporations. And they are the ones that are the CDFIs, the financial institutions. They're the ones that are out there making the dreams happen. And they need a little extra help some time as well. And to talk to them today, to talk about the, the passion that's behind their work. And these are not just jobs for these individuals. I, saw, I heard this in every one of their voices, that they believe in the calling to make sure that everyone has access to live their dreams and the dreams of their families. That's what today is all about as we go forth. And I want to talk about the tools that we have available, CDFIs and MDIs. They're, they're in our toolkit. These are, these are ways that we can help people really live up to their full potential, and that's what we're trying to do. It's also how we help individuals build wealth. Um, black and brown Americans right now, you know, you look at their percentage in the population, but just have a fraction, a fraction of the wealth. And that's been historic. And we have to peel back at the real true causes of that. What has been going on for such a long time? And I believe that there has been systemic discrimination and racism, racism inherent in our financial institutions for far too long. So we have these CDFIs and MDIs as the alternative to say, no, we just can't allow the status quo to go, that these people are going to languish and never be able to have this access. Let's create another funding source. Let's find another way to achieve those objectives that are so critically important to all of us. And it's also, when you think about access to capital, there are cycles of poverty that have been ongoing in places like the Bronx and Harlem and East New York and Buffalo, New York and Rochester. And so this is not just a, a phenomenon here. It, it is across our state. And the more we are thoughtful about this and find out how to break out those, break those cycles, whether it's better education when they're younger, you know, getting kids even before school age and investing in them, believing in them, after school programs to keep our kids busy, so much of the work that's done right here at Sobro, and workforce training programs, the internships when they're younger, training for real jobs when they're older, and then talking about what is your dream? What would you like to do? You wanted to start a business? Well, here's how we hold your hand and show you how to get those resources. I had a minor experience with this, not the same challenges uh, that others face, but I helped my mother start a small business. I helped my sister start a small business. I had to do all the paperwork for her to be a certified MWBE. It was in a different state, but it just made you want to pull your hair out, how frustrating it was. And there's so many barriers. People just say, it's just too hard. I'm going to give up. Am I know what I'm talking about? Yes, I see a lot of nodding heads. And that's why I also said in my administration, as part of our equity agenda, we are going to identify why it is so challenging for people to be certified as MWEs, because we want to make sure that they have access to literally billions of dollars in state contracts. That is transformative for businesses. You get one of those subcontracts, and the next thing you know, you're the prime, and you're hiring other people. You're going to hire people from that same ecosystem. That's how we build wealth in our communities. And so we need to talk about how we can continue to help. We've already invested $5 million in financial inclusion grants uh, in our fund, but you know what? $5 million is nice. It's not a small amount of money. Let's go big. Uh, I'm, I'm of the philosophy, you go big or you go home. We're not going home. We're going big right here. And so we're going to continue deepening our commitment to the F, uh, CDFIs, and we're going to make an historic investment. And what I am proposing to do is to take of the $500 million allocated through the American Rescue Plan to New York to seek the approval from the federal government to allocate $150 million 
into the CDFIs, our highest investment in New York State history. And also to monitor the situation and to also find other barriers that may be in the way for people's success, we're gonna form an advisory council. Let's continue. This is not just a one-off conversation. I don't believe in that. This is the beginning of a process where we're gonna to continue to hear from the people who are out there in the streets, working with the businesses, working with the individuals. What are the remaining barriers and how do we break them down? And so we're launching an advisory council with DFS uh, thank you, Superintendent Harris, and representatives from the CDFIs and MDIs to t discuss how we can deepen our, our continued support because there is no recovery from this pandemic until every community comes back, regardless of their socioeconomic status, regardless of the color of the skin of the people who live there, regardless of the origin of their birth, where they may have come from, our new immigrants. It does not matter until we lift everyone up. And I'm not just talking about surviving. I'm talking about thriving. That is what we're setting out to do, to change people's mindsets about what the status quo can or should be. We are just breaking through that and saying, this is a new era for New York. And it starts in rooms like this. We have the conversations. We bring the resources to the table and then there is no stopping us. So I believe in this. I will continue to be your ally and make sure that all of you are successful. And I look forward to continuing the conversations, the work, and I'm looking forward to seeing results. I'm always results oriented, metrics. I wanna see how we went from here to here. And let's make sure that we make this wildly successful. So with that, I will bring up, uh, I believe Hope Knight is next. Uh, on our agenda to talk about her work, and then we'll get to our Superintendent Harris. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I really want to thank you for bringing us together today because of your commitment to small businesses, especially businesses and communities of color. Um, it's great to be here with so many friends and colleagues that I've worked with on the ground in service to small businesses. Um, this was an important gathering at a crucial time. Your CDFIs played a critical role during the COVID-19 pandemic, and they helped minority businesses really weather the storm. Um, in my previous role at Greater Jamaica, I was on the ground and I saw at first line how uh, CDFIs helped uh, connect uh, small businesses to federal resources like the uh, PPP program and the state's uh, $800, 800 million dollar uh, small business grant recovery program, and they CDSIs will continue to play an important role in moving us forward for an inclusive and full economic recovery. Uh, we at ESD are proud to work hand in hand with both MDIs and CDFIs across the state. Uh, we look forward to advancing the governor's. Uh, historic funding for CDFIs moving forward. And I also look forward to working with all of you to uh, support small businesses and to advance a more equitable economy. Um, and now I'd like to bring up Superintendent Harris, who the governor has said has spent so much time working on these issues of financial inclusion. Please, Superintendent Harris. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. And first, I also would like to thank the governor for bringing us all together today and for your commitment to these incredibly important issues. As the first African American and first woman of color to sit in my chair at DFS, it's important that I bring my lived experiences to this role and to the work that we do. And it's so wonderful to have your support, Governor, as I look to do that. Our CDFIs, as you've heard, are the tip of the spear when it comes to the wealth gap in the United States. We know today that black women have 90% less wealth than white men. And it's simply unacceptable. And our CDFIs and MDIs are really here to help us start to close that wealth gap, which will benefit everybody, increasing GDP and the number of jobs we have in New York State and around the country. That's why one of the first things I did when I came in as superintendent was to start to talk to our CDFIs and MDIs and talk about even some of the regulatory challenges that prevented them from, from helping them serve the communities. Uh, and we're already working on some of those things, but I'm so grateful that the governor has announced and convened this advisory council because we know we have a lot more work to do. 
In addition to our work with CDFIs and MDIs, we've done a number of other things to advance the governor's financial equity agenda. I'm proud that we established a banking development district right here in the Bronx, keeping a branch, a bank branch that was slated for closure open for Bronx residents. I'm also proud to have worked with the governor to expand the Community Reinvestment Act here in New York to cover non-depository institutions. Nearly 70% of mortgages in the US are made by non-depository institutions, and until the governor's work here in New York, those were not covered under the Community Reinvestment Act, ensuring that they were lending to black and brown communities the way that they should. Finally, just last week, we announced that we were issuing an emergency regulation to freeze check cashing fees in New York State, where they were as of last year. Check cashing fees, as, as folks know, uh, hit working class people too hard, and they were being raised every year, and we said, enough. We need to freeze these in place and examine the methodology by which working class New Yorkers are charged. So I'm so grateful that the governor has given me the opportunity to be in this role. And as I said, I look forward to continuing the work and the conversation with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to hear from our borough president, Vanessa Gibson, and also Hazel Dukes. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for being here, and welcome to Sobro. I am so honored to serve as the 14th Bronx Borough President and really standing together in solidarity with our governor, Kathy Hochul, with our DFS, uh, Superintendent Adrian Harris, as well as our president of ESD, uh, Hope Knight, uh, Mother Hazel Dukes, the mother to all of us, and our president and CEO here at Sobro, Lourdes Zapata, and the entire community. What greater place to make this announcement of $150 million for CDFIs than the great borough of the Bronx? And I am just so honored to serve as the borough president for such a time as this. And in recognizing as we continue to recover from the impacts of COVID-19, no greater investment we can, we can make is in our CDFIs and making sure we continue to invest and provide access and opportunity for our small businesses, our merchants, our MWBE firms, our entrepreneurs, and really creating that economic stability that New Yorkers deserve. And we just completed this incredible roundtable of financial educators and experts and entrepreneurs that represent not just the Bronx, but the city and the state of New York. And in all of our work together, we have the same vision. We have the same blueprint and the same purpose. We want access, we want opportunity, we want growth, we want revitalization, we want further investments in our state. And we know we can do it. There is nothing impossible when you put the right minds together, women leading, things can happen. And I'm so grateful to work with this distinguished uh, leadership that is really not just providing the opportunities here in the Bronx, but across the state of New York. And so for that, we are grateful. We are grateful for our governor and her leadership. She is a friend to the Bronx. She continues to understand the challenges that we are facing, but the fact that this is a borough of opportunity, of growth, of just cultural diversity and so many of our businesses that have struggled to survive that don't feel that they have voices in government that care. Not only do we care, but we are prepared to do the work ahead. And by this historical announcement today, we are investing in the future. And when we invest in our CDFIs, we invest in the future of our economy, of our New Yorkers, of our businesses, and all of our stakeholders. So I am so proud and grateful to work with all of you as the borough president. Our economic development arm, the BOEDC, stands ready, willing, and able to work with all of you and to walk with you on this journey to look at creative and innovative approaches to business and economic development. We can get this done, and we will get this done. So today is a great day. It's a step forward in the right direction, and I look forward to the work and partnership ahead. And now I have the opportunity, which I love to do, because this 
incredible public servant, needs no introduction. She is a long time civil rights leader. She is the mother to all of us. She has been a great source of encouragement. She has been in the trenches working with us on financial literacy and education, financial empowerment, racial equality and social justice, giving opportunities for African American and Latino communities across this state. She is the president of the NAACP chapter here in New York State, Mother Hazel Dukes. Thank you, Mother Hazel. Love you. Thank you so much. What an education opportunity I had this morning to meet so many women who are out doing this work every day. But this would not have happened. As I said, there is uh, in uh, any endeavor, there have to be a leader. The band, the choir, the chef. But today, in the great borough of the Bronx, borough president, the governor, the leader of the state of New York came here today to not only hear, but to make an announcement. You know, I told you all early, talk is cheap. This young woman hit the ground running. She put together the best minds that she could find to bring into her administration. And she didn't bring them in to have a press conference about them. She brought them in to work. And that's what they have done. Mr. Pugh from my Carver Bank, uh, we meet regularly once a month, really, with the leadership. And you're going to make a great report this afternoon. Uh, you, will say you, was, you will say you left Harlem and came to the Bronx. And you was with this great mind, this governor of the state of New York, who is working with her dream team to make reality real. Because when a man and a woman have a job and an opportunity, the whole family moves. And that's what this governor is about, moving us from yesterday to today and to the future for our children. She not only talked about in the business, but she talked about education. The family equity is the word to be used, not against, but including all of us. And that's what she has put together. That's what she's done here today. And I'm pleased to be a part of it. You know, I've been in this trencher a long time. I make governors, make presidents of the United States, borough presidents, and we can get rid of them too if they don't do the job. I'm here today because this young woman, the governor of the state, Governor Hoka, is making things happen, including inclusion, all of us, not just some of us. She want to raise the boat tide that all of us come together. And so I'm pleased, Lorda, to be here in your home borough. We had the privilege of working over many years together on these issues to see the work of this woman in a short time. You're right, two, two months for you not six months for you. That's what women do. They put us in the kitchen, in the hot water, in the tea, and we make it boil. So thank you, Governor, for this great day here in the Bronx to Borough. Thank you, Hazel Dukes. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. And, uh, and it is actually six months today six months today, so uh, uh, a lifetime of experience in six months, but uh, it's been fabulous, and uh, what an honor. Uh, any questions for the press before we wrap up here today? All right. Well, thank you all for coming out for this important announcement. Uh, thank you for all of our participants and for our leaders who are going to make this happen. Thank you, everyone.